for touchdowns. Very short kickoff. Desmond Tardy from the 22, and he's tackled out of the 37-yard line. But the coaching staff says they believe in his ability to bounce back, and they believe that he will play well today for Purdue. Painter, a quick throw, and it's dropped in and out of the hands of Selwyn Lyman. Second down, Painter rolling, rolling, and has to throw it, nearly intercepted. To get underneath Dorian Bryant in the slot, they want more speed on the field against this spread offense of Purdue. Third and ten, they bring the blitz, and no chance for Lyman, it's quickly three and out. For Purdue, Jared Armstrong, a fifth-year senior, to punt it, and leading back is Tracy Porter from his own 15 and is tackled immediately. Outstanding coverage by Aaron Lee. Keep an eye on Tardy, number 82, all the way down at the bottom of your screen. James Hardy is one of the nation's very best wide receivers. Ben Weiss back at the starting center position. That is Fisher in motion. And spinning his way out across the 20 is Thick Ten. Lewis looking around. Catch is made by Peyton. Lewis out of the shotgun. Plenty of time. And a dart. And there's his main man, James Hardy. Indiana's career leader, despite only being a junior. Courtney Roby, a former star here at Indiana. Handed off to Fig Pen, and he's out to the 44-yard line on a first down carry. Fig Pen out of the backfield makes a catch, and he stays in bounds and pulls his way across midfield to the 48, and that's good enough for an Indiana first down. So I beg your pardon. Ball. Yep, it's third down and three. And Lewis to throw it. Boy, that's a long throw for a two-yard gain to James Bailey, but it is another conversion on third down. They fake the handoff to Thigpen. Lewis keeps it himself, and he'll pick up two. Illinois played a terrific game against them in Columbus. Did he ever have possession? No, the official right there on it, as Marcus Thigpen just could not find the handle. And it's a nice call by Mike Dolce. First true third and long of the game for Indiana. Great protection again for Lewis. Now he's under heavy pressure, and the catch is made across the middle by Andrew Means, and that's a first down to the 29-yard line. Gain of 17. They fake it to Thigpen, and here comes the reverse the other way to Fisher, and it is read beautifully by the Purdue defense. I mean, look at those numbers. I mean, you go from 114 in total to 59th in one year. Brock's backs crew, nice improvement. Robbed up high, but out of bounds. He had an eye on James Hardy down around the 10. Now it's third down and 20. And Lewis out of the shotgun, but blown dead before it ever got started. Didn't get the ball snapped in time. Delay a game. Offense, number 15. Five-yard penalty. Still third down. It's amazing to read in the Indianapolis paper today a story about Bill Lynch and, you know, will he be brought back as head coach here at Indiana? And many believe that they have to win this game for that to happen. They hand it off on third down and forever. Well, Bill Lynch is an Indiana guy, too. This is a dream job for him. And I think under a tough, tough circumstances, he's done a remarkable job this season with his ball club. That one punted, and then was it able to get saved down by the goal line? Yes, it was at the one. Tracy Porter sprinting down to make that play, and what a play it was. No score as they play for the 110th time. These two outstanding universities today, the 83rd time for the old oak and bucket, Jason Taylor in the game. And is met immediately by Joe Kremer, who's back in that starting lineup today after missing time with injury. He was able to keep it there, and that's why Indiana set up well on defense. Painter throws and gets him out of big trouble. First down all the way out to the 21 on the catch by Lyman. 
So first down now from the 22 yard line Taylor wrapped up at the line of scrimmage maybe picked up a yard Adam McClure the middle linebacker super high motors those guys go full speed whether it's practice or a game she just retired that award in favor of a Penn State linebacker the way it's gone this You're year. Right. Painter just throws it away excellent coverage by the Indiana secondary Call a third down and nine. These are tough to convert, and the Boilermakers have done it 27%. Blitz coming. Dumped off over the middle to the tight end. Dustin Keller. But he is denied a first down. Making the tackle on the spot, not allowing any yards after contact, forcing Purdue to pump the ball. And they put it for the second time, and again, Porter waiting. This time from his 22. Nearly went down, stays on his feet and slips across the 25. For 635 to play here in the opening quarter. Purdue and Indiana are scoreless. Very bright future for that young man, whether it be playing in well, the National Football League or any other walk of life. Did he just say that Purdue's just another game, just enough to get right? Yeah. Those are the numbers from that first drive. The 14 plays Charles mentioned, 51 yards, but nothing to show for it. And there's a floater in the air that's intercepted by Justin Scott. And he steps out of bounds where? The 31-yard line. And now the Boilermakers get a break. Can they take advantage? I think the officials are going to come back and see if Scott stepped out of bounds. It looked like he did from here. And on the play, there was nothing more than Kellen Lewis overthrowing it. And let's see if Scott does step out as he runs down. Maybe right in there, maybe there. Definitely, well, I'm not even going to say definitely, but right in that area, back in there, that could be this point where they're looking to see if he stepped out. Following the review, it's been right determined there. the runner stepped out of bounds at the 39-yard line. Yep. The interception stands, 39-yard line, first down Purdue. Clock operator, set the game clock, 546, 546. And Painter on the option play decides to keep it. Right. Closing in on five minutes here in the opening quarter, a scoreless game between Purdue and Indiana. A quick throw and a catch down of the 33-yard line to Greg Orton. In Wisconsin, the Badgers know they're going to a bowl game, but which bowl game? Painter rolling left and throws too high for Stendiford. He was open over there. It would have been enough for a first down. Armstrong trying to pin him inside the 10, and that's precisely what he will do. Purdue leads this all-time series. They've won five in a row, nine of the last ten, and a big burst up the middle for the senior Josiah Sears. Sears going to get it again, and the big fellow rumbles his way out to the 25-yard line. That'll be a gain of two. And the conference is loaded with terrific guys that can play linebacker. Lewis, his first throw since the interception, puts it up deep looking, and it is caught. What a play by Means. His second big reception today, all the way to the 35. And Ray Fisher did not Previous play against Wisconsin. Previous play is under review from the replay booth. Okay, you heard that. It's under review. The replay official is Tom Quinn. Was he in before he stepped out? It's one, one foot in college. Play stands as called. Good call. That didn't take long. No, and I love that. How about that? Career-long 40-yard reception for Andrew Means. I kind of saw his breakout game here against Illinois earlier this year when he played so well. Lewis rolling. And that is Hardy. They're going to hand it off. Big pin is caught from behind by Abel. Was under Bill Mallory. Bill Mallory, great ball club. They lost to Tennessee in the Peach Bowl that year. And they fake it one way. Lewis escaping trouble and a lot of room. To the 21. Man, he can run. 
officially a little over 600 yards, but he rushed for nearly 900 without the sack. There's Hardy. And he's inside the 10. It's first and goal, Indiana at the 8. Got to be aware of the quarterback draw on a play like this. Nope, they're going to throw it. That's Fisher. And he maybe got back to the line of scrimmage, and that's a big maybe. Second and goal from just inside the 10. That's Fisher. And on the option, Lewis to the end zone. Point after by Austin Starr. He is good. A one hop kickoff fielded to the 30 and brought all the way out to the 42 yard line by Wasikowski. I think it's a great tradition whether or not it will change down the road. Charles remains to be seen. And the first quarter, time of possession completely dominated by IU. Play fake to Jason Taylor and Painter to throw down the middle. He's got his tight end, Keller. And that's a first down to the Indiana 37 yard line. Painter's pass complete to number 28. In the I formation, that's big Frank Halliburton. They're running him into the flat, but it's overthrown by the quarterback, Painter. Quick throw to Dorian Bryant. Thank you, Teresa. They had the uh, let down last week against Northwestern. There's a throw and a catch. It's good enough for a first down. Again, it's Dorian Bryant. He's inside the 25. Lyman well, in motion. They're going to hand it off to Taylor in a big run up the middle. He spins his way, breaking a couple of tackles inside the 15. Well, they have Painter up under center, and Taylor is the lone setback. A pair of receivers at the top of the screen are going to hand it off to Taylor. He lost his footing, but appears to have the first down. We see the Hoosiers uh, against Purdue. Purdue, that red zone offense, very, very good. Very best in the Big Ten. Taylor again, nowhere to go. Second down and 10 upcoming. They went to the Rose Bowl in 2000 as Big Ten tri champions. That's a pretty good level last time I checked. Painter. Down he goes. Joe Kramer. So Indiana crowd fired up. They're playing in front of a sellout crowd for the first time all year. 39 sacks. Painter rolls, throws. It will be shy of a first down, but was it a caught pass at the 10 yard line by Bryant? It is. It would be a very long field goal try if the play does not stand. A chip shot if it does. Bill Lemonnier, one of the better officials in the Big Ten running Following the game. Following the review, replay has reversed the call on the field. The pass is incomplete. Fourth down, 22 and a half yard line. Fourth down, 22 and a half. Of course, Joe Tiller's not going to like that call. Then against his Boilermakers. Chris Summers has had an excellent year, 14 of 17. And this one is pushed wide right. Fisher, but none was thrown. They'll be pretty good real soon because Tim Brewster has enthusiasm in abundance. Faking the handoff is Lewis and then dances his way along the sidelines. He's two yards short of a first down. Third down and two. Lewis rolling to his left, being chased by Dan Bick, escapes that tackle, cuts it back to the inside, and then ran himself away from a first down try. It would have been a short, you know, short distance for it, wouldn't it, Tom? It would have been a much closer call. And the punt is blocked. Picked up by Indiana. And that is a first down. Blocked by Jason Taylor. Fake it to Fig Pen. Lewis being chased, still being chased. Got a block, stays on his feet. And ran about a quarter of a mile to gain two. Second down again, Lewis to throw it. Dangerous throw. We're down at eight. 
And Lewis again forced to run out of trouble and just throws it away. You don't have to commit extra guys to get Kellen Lewis on the ground. That only helps your pass coverage. Hines able to get this one away and then it bounces out of bounds at the 30 yard line. Dorian Bryant, they swing it out to him. And he's close to a first down. It looks like he got it out to the 41 yard line. And it off to Corey Sheets. And nowhere to run. Wrapped up by Greg Brown, the junior from Centerville, Ohio. Because we think the offense will get impatient and actually start to make mistakes. Painter drops it off wide open in the flat to Kyle Adams. First down, quick throw, catch by Lyman. That's good hard running, strong running there to get another first down to the 30. Selwyn Lyman picked up about five or six additional yards. Swing it out again to Dorian Bryant. And he is wrapped up to the 24-yard line. Well, Purdue on the move, the ball the 24-yard line after the six-yard pass completion. And they hand it to Taylor, the first man through, and again, just nowhere to go. And again, the man right on the spot was Greg Brown. He had some help. Third down, Painter finds another tight end. This is Keller, and it's very close to a first down. I, depends on the spot. The first down, Purdue, just inside the 20-yard line. They fake the handoff, and Painter is dragged to the ground, and again, it is Greg Brown. For a loss of 11. Backs him up to the 30. Boy, it's Bryant quick. Still on his feet. Inside the 20, down to the 19-yard line. That gets it to third and 10. They had an 11-yard sack a moment ago. Painter stands in there looking for Bryant, and it's batted down. This from 40. But he's on the other hash this time where you thought he'd like it better, Mr. Davis, and you are right on the nose again. Kickers like to draw it. They don't want to fade it. And this is James Bailey. He got turned around. And is still on his feet. Still on his feet. Turning the corner and brings it all the way back to the 29-yard line. Pretty nice return right there by James Bailey. The old oak and bucket. Kellen Lewis even made a great remark. He said there's a lot more P's than there are I's and hoping to regain control of the old oak and bucket today. And I hand it off again and again. It's thick pin on a big gainer all the way to the 38-yard line. Going it out in the flat to Peyton, who comes back in there to replace Thigpen, and he bangs his way to the 23-yard line and another first down. Dan Bick steps up to stop Thigpen after maybe a one-yard gain. And then led people to believe that maybe this might be it. We'll find out soon. Bick chasing Lewis, who has to throw it away. Very intelligent play by the quarterback. He got outside of the tackle box. And you know, that was the reason they all said they were coming back to beat Ohio State to win the Big Ten and contend for the national championship. Looking to the end zone, and did he get it? No. What an effort down there again by Andrew Means. He was screaming for a flag. Good coverage back there by the duo of McKinley and Justin Scott. Well, this kid is having a phenomenal year. Austin Starr, a 42-yard field goal try, and it is right down the can. What an unbelievable year. And they had to beat Purdue as that bounces once, and it is picked up alertly by Desmond Tardy. A lot of super fans in Big Ten country. 2.40 to play until halftime. That's Standiford, his first catch today. They called the punch. They knocked the ball free after being blocked twice on the same play. Right through the whip, it's a hard thrown ball. They're trying to keep everything in front of them and then come up and make tackles. Painter 13 of 22 for 125 yards and has a wide open Greg Orton to midfield. And did the ball come loose? 
Well, the Hoosiers say it does. Picking it up is Nick Polk. Former wide receiver turned safety. And they're saying it's Indiana ball. First down, Indiana. Hey, can, I, can I reverse myself? Because I just did. Because it, I thought initially he was down. 2.04 to go. Let's see how Indiana tries to strike here, Tom. Well, they have all three timeouts and more than enough time to get down the field. Although Lewis, again, under heavy pressure, just has to throw it away. Lewis dumps it off to Thigpen. And he's shoved out of bounds at the 43-yard line. Appears to be about a yard shy of the first down. And Lewis fakes one way, rolls the other, dumps it off, and it's dropped by the tight end, Nick Sexton. He only has two catches all year long. You're almost in the position now of, okay, they've seen that. We may have to go ahead and run it and get it. What if they ran the same play again, same formation? Although they're going to let Lewis handle the football here, and the pile appeared to push him enough for the first down. Let's just say confidence wouldn't be real high from the coaching staff to go right back <laughs> to that guy. That's all I need to say on that. This looks good. Oh. But Indiana gets a fresh set of downs with 140 on the clock. They're coming after Lewis. And Hardy at the 35-yard line. I'm not thinking three here. I'm thinking for a way to get six and carry that kind of momentum into the locker room. Bullet to Hardy. He's unable to get out of bounds. They'll temporarily stop the clock for the first down. Both teams running players in and off the field. And a quick throw to Fisher. And what an open field tackle is made again by Justin Scott. Scott is having a dynamite game. Second and five of the Purdue 22 and Lewis looking to the end zone again for means and broken up and a flag comes in. Pender came in along with a coverage of Brandon King and I think they threw the flag on Pender. Pass interference, defense number seven. 15 yard penalty, previous spot, automatic first down. See Brandon King is all over it. Oh. Killing Lewis's legs. Slant, touchdown, Hardy. And quite a connection, the number one connection in Indiana University history. Going after his good by star and two full seasons worth, because remember, Kel Lewis didn't become the starter until partway through the season last year. Painter on first down, looking around, and down he goes again. In the arm of Greg Middleton. This will be the final play of the half. No, we'll have one more. That incompletion stops the clock with five minutes and Joe Kramer laid a lick on Painter. A flag came down on the near side. That's personal foul against Purdue. I think, there's a, I think they're a little frustrated. Their biggest thing is spreading it around to these receivers, but thus far today, they're getting nothing done, and Indiana's going to go into the locker room with every bit of the momentum from the first half. You could not have had a better first half if you're an Indiana Hoosier. Hard to wow, believe. It, it really is hard to believe, but no better time for the sellout to occur with Indiana Hoosiers. So much at stake in this game. Marcus Stigpen from the 17, and he can fly. A good angle, however, and able to run him out of bounds out of the 37 yard line is the Purdue coverage team. We thank Coach Tiller and as always thank Carissa for corralling him before he gets out there to start the second half. Thick pin on the first down carry, tapped up by Cliff Averill, a gain of two. Memorial Stadium, so Musco came into town and everything is lit up very nicely. And Lewis almost lit up. That I could be. Pretty, yep, could be uh, in a, a Could grounding. be. See, he wasn't outside the tackle box, I don't believe. Lewis, long ball. Just beyond the reach of Andrew Means. Michael Hines to punt. Dorian Bryant waits, and this is returnable. 
until it bounced, and then it takes an Indiana bounce and goes out of bounds at the 14-yard line. Looks good, but Joe Tiller, as he told Carissa, sometimes the quarterback holds the ball too long. That allows him to take the extra sacks. And now they're going to hand it off to Sheets, and we talked at the very end of the first half about... Oh, a dangerous throw, but it's a catch made by Selwyn Lyman. Is if Purdue ever does dedicate to actually running the ball a little bit more. Maybe more than one run, go back and pass it again. A short yardage here on the carry by Corey Sheets, who came in. Fake the handoff to Sheets, and Painter has to get rid of it. And no one was open. Peter's pass incomplete. Only two out of eight converting on third down is Purdue so far today. Lofting it for Lyman and right through his hands. Nice coverage by the senior cornerback. That was great coverage. And now Tracy Porter from his 31 stays on his feet. And is tackled back at the 27. Anthony Haygood, number 42, the starting linebacker. Indiana in front and with the football, the double reverse. And this is Ray Fisher across the 40 and close to midfield as he's run out of bounds at the 47-yard line. It went from thick pin to Fisher coming the other way. Indiana controlling the momentum. And, of course, Glenville High School just outside of Cleveland. The longtime legendary head coach there is Ted Ginn Sr. And this is Marcus Thigpen, one of the fastest men in the country. And he's inside the 10 all the way down to the 9-yard line. Thigpen, the lone setback in a four-receiver set. Lewis looking around, and he'll run himself to the 5. Touchdown, Kellen Lewis. Trying to make it 24 to 3, and doing so is Austin Starr. Another very short kickoff, fielded by the backup tight end Kyle Adams, and he's out to the 32 yard line. Number 85, Kyle Adams on the return. Today, the Hoosiers wearing those throwback uniforms of that 1967 Indiana team. Jason Taylor slips a couple of tackles. He's out to the 40 yard line, tripped up by Greg Brown. They were voted as a team to go to the Rose Bowl. Jason Taylor again running hard. He takes that's a late hit. hit. Yeah, that's going to be an easy call for the officials. Late hit. Number 34. 15 yard penalty. Automatic. First down. I wonder if that jawing that Taylor was doing was directed towards Will Patterson, if that wasn't some kind of a shot. You talked about getting wrapped up in the emotion. Taylor will get it again. And he is bottled up this time. And guess who is leading the charge? Greg Middleton again. But Purdue has to get something on this drive in order to get their confidence level back up for the rest of the game. And carries 30 rushing yards for Jason Taylor. Second down and 12, and Painter out of the shotgun. It's usually a delay of game. Delay game. Offense number 12, five yard penalty. Go second down. To get the ball in the hands of Dorian Bryant. And what a play made by Adam McClure, the middle linebacker. Third down and 19. They need to get to the 22 to convert. And they're well out of field goal range right now. Painter, great protection down the middle of the field and broken up. He had an eye on Kettle. And stepping in there is Austin Thomas to deliver a big hit. And that ball was actually caught on the deflection for an interception. We have a catch, interception, first down, Indiana. From inside their own 10. Thick pin dancing around, breaks a couple of tackles. And he's out across the 20. Man, can he run. Man, can he run. Marcus Thickpen, 11 carries, 112 yards. And he'll add to that here. As he again is able to break a couple of tackles and is able to pick up about five yards. 
The first 100-yard rushing game all year for Thigpen. A quick throw to Fisher. And he's close to another first down. You said instead a lot of guys had golf tournaments and softball tournaments, the bus had a bowling tournament. So Marcus Thigpen may be following in another running back's footsteps. Exactly, and they hope to be bowling here after the first of the oh, year. Oh, very nice, very Miss Thompson. Thank There's you. I'm here all week to hear Wayne. Have to try to be it. She's good, isn't she? Oh, yeah. Back in the month of June, June the 19th. He was named as a head coach here at Indiana in 2004 as there's nearly a turnover. Is it a turnover? It looked like Thick Ten got back on top of it for Indiana. Not getting ahead of yourselves instead of wondering about, hey, we're going to honor Coach Hepp. Well, the best way to honor him is to play well. Jail break there by the Purdue defense. Dorian Bryant stands at his own 17 yard line. Another punt nearly blocked. We've had one block by Purdue in the game already. Dorian Bryant out to the 21 yard line. So Curtis Painter and company are trying to find some kind of rhythm. This one becomes even magnified. The good thing was the defense has not given up points in the second half. But the offense has to get on track. They're going to try and start it on the ground with Corey Sheets. And he runs into a Hoosier wall. On that first down carry. And the first man there, Jamie Curlew. Painter throws. Boy, that was a bullet. And caught by Orton. Pass complete to number right at the first down Ray marker Orton. at the 31-yard line. So when you start looking at all the different conferences, and remember, Seven win teams have to be selected before six win teams mm -hmm. in order to fill out bowl slots if you can't fill all the numbers. So seven is the magic number this year. Too many teams eligible. Painter looking for Orton and just barely overthrows him. Painter's pass incomplete intended for 21. Greg Orton. Painter has a gun. Greg Orton, that was a perfect opportunity to make that. You'd like to see him play. leave his feet. Leave his feet. You've got to do something to get your team moving. Corey Sheets. Still on his feet, and that's a first down out to the 42-yard line. Good hard running by the junior out of Manchester, Connecticut. Well, they fake the run and make the throw, and again, an outstanding open field tackle made by Tracy Porter. Nine on nine. Porter on front. Second down and nine for Painter and company from their own 44-yard line. Sheets again. And again, the first man there is Curlew. A gain of two. Third and six. Only a four-man rush. Painter has forever. And again, looking for Orton, who's trying to create separation and a flag is thrown. This is going to be interesting which way this call goes, the way they were both hand fighting. That was Greg Orton, number 21, on Tracy Porter, number 9. Will they get Orton for the push back, or will they get Tracy Porter for initially causing the contact? Pass interference, defense, number 9. The penalties decline. The play results, first down. That's a great catch by Orton. Hanging on one hand, they throw it to Bryant. And he is tackled inside the five, down to the four by Nick Polk. Second and two from inside the five. Sheets ran into his own blocker and lunges for the end zone. The ball comes out. I think they're going to spot that ball, actually, where he originally hit the ground. The ground caused that fumble. It's at the one-yard line, and that would be good enough, perhaps, for a first down. Corey Sheets into the end zone and Purdue its first touchdown of the game at the 147 mark here of the third quarter. And everything else that goes into this Indiana program, Purdue did not has not pulled it up and left for West Lafayette just yet. Big pin. Brings it out to the 28-yard line. And a flag comes in late. Purdue 
Purdue just scored. They cannot turn right around and get a personal foul or give additional yardage to Indiana and get them started again. Bill Lamagne, our referee today. Wait, is he picking it up? No foul on the play. Number 15 was pushed into the man. No foul. Kellen Lewis under center with thick pin in the backfield and a two tight end set, and they're going to run the football, and why not? They've run it so well here in the game today, but nothing that time. There's still a full quarter and a little bit more left to play. They continue to run their offense. Lewis running around being chased by four or five Boilermakers, and Abel finally runs him out of bounds at the 23-yard line. And then he's up. That's Hardy on a wide receiver screen. And he makes the catch, and he's out to the 35-yard line. So Indiana three and out on this drive, and this will be the final play, perhaps, of this third quarter. You got to go get the ball. You're giving up yardage. Oh, Dorian. As a punt returner, you've got to go get the ball. It's one of the five rules in the kicking game, five don'ts. Don't let the ball bounce. It will be the final play of the quarter. Bryant standing at the 25, and the ball is being down at the 8. That's what they're playing for here today. Did they get a last sip of water from it before they turned it into a trophy? If not, something else. <laughs> when throw is made, you can drink a lot of things out of a bucket. <laughs> yes, you can. But that was a nice first down play. Bring up second and short. Jason Taylor gets close to first down yardage. Painter on the keeper. And he just runs right through Nick Polk. Mercy. It's an eight yard carry for Painter. This time he will hand it off. After you deliver a blow like that, you still took a bit of a hit. You want to get rid of it for a minute. Yeah, go ahead and take it. We don't see that often out of Purdue. Back to the air, and Painter slings it out there, and it's batted down. Take the handoff to Taylor and open down the middle of the field. And Painter missed him was Dustin Keller. He was wide open. Painter. He is tackled. Yes, he was. And again, it is Greg Middleton, who by the end of the day may well lead the country in sacks. Maybe in a defenseless position. And that's a big reason why Bill Romagne blew it down. Well, how about Porter? He came to get the football. And now he's coming back the other way and ends up bringing it to the 40-yard line. I think a lot of the Purdue players thought he was just going to let that ball bounce and still have pretty good field position. And that one for 22 yards, 10 more than that average. So Indiana with great field position. The offense hasn't done much here in the second half. Purdue's defense has really been ready to play here in the second half. And Lewis to throw. For the first time in a long time, has lots of time. Still looking around and just throws it away. I still would like to see him after a little bit of time in the pocket go. Handed off to Thigpen, and he's off to the races again. Cuts it back to the middle of the field, and finally tackled from behind at the 15. Another big run for Marcus Thigpen. And a carry for the first time to Trey Burgess. And he's down to the 12-yard line. Lewis looking to the end zone. Five wide receivers in the game for Indiana. On a third down and eight. And Lewis spinning, still spinning. Down he goes. That'll be a loss of 10 yards. Who's hit on 15 consecutive field goals. This one from 42 yards out. Good snap, good hold, and this guy 
as it drifts to the left in the first time in his last 16 attempts that Austin Starr misses a field goal. This is a must drive for the Boilermakers on offense and on first down again under heavy pressure. Second down and 10 for Purdue. They're going to hand it off to Corey Sheets, and he's tripped up out to the 30-yard line. It'll be third down and five for the Boilermakers. The clock at nine and a half minutes to play here in Bloomington. What a catch by Dorian Bryant to keep the drive alive. That is a first down for Purdue out to the 37. Stay on the ground again. And what they're finding is they're actually having a little more success running the ball than maybe what they would have thought. But they still need to continue to move it quickly to get it downfield. What a throw by Painter to the tight end, Keller. He avoids one tackler and is still on his feet, and it takes three guys and finally four of them to throw him down to the ground at the 32. He is a low. That was absolutely sensational. Of course, nationally, Martin Rucker at Missouri is the number one receiving tight end. And they go right back to the big fella, and why not to the 21, close to another first down? All right, Dave, thank you very much. And again, they're going to stay on the ground. A late flag comes in. Good, hard, tough running by Corey Sheets. Finally tackled at the 11-yard line. Personal foul. Face mask. Number 33. Half the distance to the goal. Automatic first down. But Indiana has to make things happen, not just hope that Purdue makes mistakes. First down, they're going to have the quarterback Painter keep it, and he's down to the one-yard line. That's been a very successful play the less than handful of times they've run it. But his leg strength, where he benches a bit, I mean, squats 460, benches 365, that gives him a lot of power. Here they are in red zone again with three possessions. They've scored twice. But only one touchdown. They pitch it on the sweep, and into the end zone is Corey Sheets, and all of a sudden, if they get the point after, it is a one-possession game. And guess who's lurking in the old Oaken Bucket game? The team that's won it five straight years and won it nine of the last ten, the Purdue Boilermakers. it out to the 27 yard line our producer uh, Terry Eward double dipping over the weekend football today and a little hoops tomorrow the ball is loose and Kellen Lewis alertly just dives on top of it well Fig Pitt is standing on the sideline with his helmet off it looks like he's trying to stretch out some kind of a cramp that, that's that has to be the only reason he's not on the field Play blown dead before it ever got started. Timeout. Indiana. First team timeout. And that one, I believe, was called from the sidelines by Bill Lynch. I think he saw something out there he didn't like and didn't like what was happening. Saw the play clock winding down, and he was able to call the timeout. And, of course, they're playing for the memory of their late head coach, Terry Hepner. A throw and a catch from Lewis to Hardy, dives ahead very close to a first down. So proud to be a part of it. Uh, thank you. You're great. Thank you so much, Jane. I appreciate the time. You're welcome. Well, Jane, thank you very much, Carissa. Thank you very much. Uh, you know, it's you've seen so many pieces throughout the year about Terry Hefner. And, you know, for a lot of other guys that have come through here, Indiana has been a stepping stone job. I mean, it's littered with guys who went on to other places. Of course, uh, much debated about Bill that, Mallory, who right? wanted to stay here, and uh, they decided it wasn't good enough for him to stay here. But, oops, you know, for Terry Hefner, this was the dream job. This was it. And all the passion and the belief and the speeches and selling the program and trying to get people to, to understand that they do have a football program. The ball is loose. And Purdue has covered it up. 
stripped away and looked like by Averill. And it looked like Dan Vick was there to cover it up. 4.18 to go. Painter out of the shotgun. And he fakes a handoff, rolls, and throws a long ball down the sideline, and it's batted down. A flag is on the field. Pass interference, defense, number 28, 15-yard penalty, automatic, first down. But down to the 21-yard line, a first down for Purdue, trying to rally from 21 down, and this is Taylor. He's inside the 10. He's inside the 5. It is first and goal, Boilermakers. Painter drops open in the end zone. It's stand the third touchdown, Purdue. So after being down 24 to 3 in the early minutes of this second half, knocking away a, a, a return by Tracy Porter. Today he's a hero because of a touchdown catch, falling in the footsteps of his brother John, one of the all-time great receivers at Purdue. Kick will be handled by James Bailey from the eight-yard line. And he's met at the 22 and stopped right there. Well, now perhaps a defining drive for Kellen Lewis. Here's the opportunity. And similar to our game earlier this year, Michigan Appalachian State, maybe this is a little bit of a pressure relief. You're not playing with one eye on the scoreboard now. You know the stakes. Just let it go. Juggling catch after a tip ball, and it's hauled in by Ray Fisher. Then Appalachian got the ball back and went downfield because now they weren't trying to protect the lead. They were trying to regain one. Lewis again forced to just throw it away. Third down and a yard. Lewis rolling right. And he is going to keep it himself, and that's good enough for a first down. Out across the 35 to the 36, they will move the sticks. This drive, all he has to do is result in, sit in three points if you run the clock down far enough. 2.53 to play. Indiana has two timeouts remaining. Purdue with three left. Lewis. The throw and the catch made by Hardy out to the 43-yard line. A gain of seven on the throw to Hardy. And Lewis again on the shotgun will hand it off to Thigpen. Ran into his own man, stays on his feet, and he has the first down out to the 49. Well, you figure they need 20 more yards to get the spot of the career long for Stark. And they get almost half of that on the first down throw. Catch made by again by Thigpen. Second down and a yard. They hand it off to Fig Penn, and he's dropped for a four yard loss. Third down and five. Lewis on the crossing pattern to Hardy. And it's down to the 33 yard line. Handoff on first down to Fig Penn, and he lost a yard. Do you know he scheduled the postseason team banquet? For January, and they said, Coach, we always have in November. He said, Yeah, but I expect this to be getting ready for a bowl game in November. He was positive from the word go as soon as he stepped on campus. And the mark this man left on the people around here and their lives in Indiana is, is almost beyond description. There's a pass and a catch that really went for almost nothing. We'll call it about two yards. They are in field goal range for Austin Starr. Lewis rolling, rolling, running, and actually is caught from behind and lost a couple of yards. And did a flag come in? Now that call was called by the linesman, Mike Dolce, or Dulce. And let's see, is it a face mask? No, it's a horse collar, but I don't believe that there's a rule nope. on this level against that type no of a tackle. No the play, the no. tackle was made by the collar, exactly. not the face mask. Austin Starr is kicking unquestionably in his memory to try and get the Hoosiers into a bowl game or a chance for a bowl game from 49 yards. The snap, the hold, the kick, it is good! And 
and this will be Bryant from the five. To the 15, the 25, the 30, and that's where he's tackled. 23 seconds remaining. Personal foul, late hit number one. 15 yards, back to the 15, first down. Drop it off for Dustin Keller. He stays in the middle of the field. The clock will temporarily stop. They set him and go, and Painter fires, and the catch is no. Incomplete on the attempt to Greg Orton. Seven seconds left in the game. Well, they're shaking hands over there, but Bill Lynch knows it's not over quite yet. And they throw it, they lateral it, and that's it. And you got to believe for the first time since 1993, the Indiana Hoosiers will play in a bowl 